I've been sent a guitar kit from Crimson Guitars to enter the great guitar build-off, so that's what I'm doing in this video. I know absolutely nothing about guitars and I'm not musical at all, but anyway, let's see how it goes. I drew up a design on the iPad and I'm not exactly sure what makes a good guitar design but I think the idea of the competition is about having fun and creating something unique so I'm going with the theme of tentacles. I'll make the tentacles from copper using metal chasing and repose which I've recently been trying out and the reason for trying it out in that past project was for practice to get ready for this project. I showed in my original Repose video how to make the tools and what's involved, so I won't go too much into that here, but I'll let you know the gist of what I'm doing as I go. First I go over the outlines of the template with a fine lining tool, and then I can remove the template and work from the newly created outlines. Next I'll start to form the tentacles by pushing the material out from the back and I'll do that using a sandbag for support. It doesn't look like much but you just have to keep chipping away at it and hopefully it turns out okay. I have to keep re-softening the copper by heating it up and quenching it in water. This is called annealing, if I didn't do that regularly the copper would become work hardened and brittle which could then crack or split. It's starting to get a bit of shape and a bit of form to it so next I'm going to start working on the tentacles overlapping each other like this one here and I'll do that by pushing it out further at different depths from the back. By the way, if you don't know about the Great Guitar Build-Off, it's a competition, so definitely go and find all the other competitors' videos and buy a ticket to enter the prize draw to win this guitar. At this stage, I've changed the backing support from the sandbag to plasticine. It's really starting to emerge now and becoming a 3D form, but I don't like this section here. I think it looks separated from the rest of it. In the 2D drawing, I thought it looked fine, but it doesn't look right here to me. So instead, I'm going to blend this tentacle here into these ones, and I think that will tie it all together. I've blended that section in and I reckon it looks much better. It has a much better flow over the whole thing. So that's pretty well formed. Now I just need to refine and sharpen everything up. So I'll start doing that next. That's looking a lot sharper and more defined. But before I move on and start adding the detail like these suckers here, each tentacle needs splitting into two faces with a ridge in the middle of it. Thank you. 
I push both sides of the tentacle up towards the center to create the ridge and then afterwards I'll form it more by using a finer tool from the back directly behind the ridge. This was days and days of work so I'm just trying to show enough to give you an idea what's involved. Now I'm going over the whole thing and really trying to sharpen up and define all the edges. Now I'm ready to start adding the details and I'll start with this one small section and try and work out a method. All of the details will be suckers and they're all the same thing so once I figure out how to do this one section I can just get into it with an audio book on and do the rest of them. It's just a case of working a little from each side and each time it gets ever so slightly better. It's not fast and it definitely requires patience. The plasticine doesn't have enough support to properly define the details, it just punches in. So next I'll melt pitch onto the back which will provide plenty of support. I don't have anywhere near enough pitch to fill a large section or a pitch pot to support the whole thing, so I'll try and support the pitch with some plasticine. The pitch is amazing, you really move the material just where you want it to. There was a problem though, even though the pitch provides plenty of support, it does crack and it's broken up and it's now stuck in the plasticine, so that's not really going to work. The correct way would be to stick it to a large pot full of pitch, but as I said earlier, I don't have anywhere near enough. Also, the pitch is very messy to remove and there's a lot of that to do when constantly flipping the workpiece over from one side to the other. The suckers are starting to form, so to continue I've decided to try out hot glue as the backing. I haven't seen anywhere if this will work, but I reckon it just might. I'll use the plasticine again, but this time the glue won't crack into it and make a mess. That seems to work pretty well, it isn't as good as the pitch but not too bad at all and it's much easier to remove. I need to push the centre of each sucker in and again the hot glue is working very well. It's also a much cheaper way of doing this than using pitch which is extremely expensive.
I flip it over again and work from the back and I think to finish the suckers I had to work about six times from each side. I reckon they look great, so I'll quickly do the rest of them. And when I say quickly, I mean quickly on video, not quickly in real time. Next I'll cut the tentacles out and prepare them ready to fix to the guitar and if you're wondering I will be getting to making the guitar very soon but I had to do the tentacles first because everything else is based around them. To remove the inner sections I made a small chisel from an old allen key which worked great. Once it was cut out I cleaned up the edges using a carbide burr in the Dremel. I'm super happy with it, it was a lot of work but I thoroughly enjoyed it. To fix the tentacles to the body I'll glue it down with epoxy but first I actually need to fill the tentacles with epoxy and then I can flatten it off and then glue that down. I'll make the edges a bit taller by adding a bead of hot glue just to make sure that there's enough epoxy across the whole thing. With the copper and the epoxy the guitar is going to get fairly heavy. To help keep the weight down I've added some Q-cells to the epoxy. Next morning I removed all the hot glue using methylated spirits. I took it outside to remove the bulk of the epoxy with an orbital sander and even though I am outside I do have a respirator on, I just wanted to keep the epoxy dust out of the workshop. To even it out and get it level I then sanded it by hand on a flat board. There's a couple of runs of epoxy that leaked but they came off easy enough with a bit of heat. Now I can actually start making the guitar. The copper didn't distort too much from the template and the main thing is that the spaces for the guitar knobs are still in the correct place but I do need to slightly change the profile of the guitar before I cut the template out. It's already looking like a guitar in no time at all, so next I'll sand it using my belt grinder and I'm using that because the different radius wheels will be handy for shaping the profile. Next I'll round over all the edges with a 3 8 round over bit. Now on to fitting the neck which needs a slight adjustment. The neck is a touch too wide so I'll take some off either side of the pocket.
that fits really nicely and I checked it with the straight edge and it looks good and all lined up. Next I'll sand it to 240 grit then apply sanding sealer to fill the grain. While that's drying, I'll start shaping the headstock and I have no idea what I'm doing here, but hopefully it'll look okay. I change that slightly off camera, then cut it out on the bandsaw. Now I'll get back to the copper tentacles and I've been very unsure how I'm going to finish them but I've decided that I'll blacken them and I'll do that with super blue. I changed my mind so I cleaned that off with a wire brush and a Dremel and instead I've decided to knock the shine off with vinegar. I didn't like the black because it was too dark but I really don't want them to be shiny and blingy either. I'm happy with that so I'll spray on a couple of coats of clear satin. Now back to the body and I'll sand it smooth and then apply some colour. I'm using dye and I'm using two colours for a sunburst finish. After applying both of the colours I'm using some metho to blend them together and that works very well. Um, when it was dry I built up the colours more with more dye. Now I'll glue the tentacles on but first I need to mask the body and I can't think of a particularly good way of doing this so I'll just go for it and keep my fingers crossed. Now I need to remove the finish so the glue can adhere to the wood and for the glue I'm using epoxy. It's been about four hours and the epoxy has gone off enough but still a little soft so I can clean up any squeeze out around the edges. There's more stray epoxy than I'd hoped for. It crept under the tape and to remove it I used acetone. I painted that on as carefully as I could to soften the epoxy and then I scraped that off with a paddle pop stick so I didn't scratch the wood. It also removed the dye but I found that pretty easy to touch up and blend in so it should be okay. It was a bit of a pain but not disastrous. It was a late night dealing with that, it was after midnight when I finished but anyway this is the next morning and I'm applying some finish and for that I'm using True Oil.
I plan to put two or three coats on, but I'm running out of time to finish the guitar and to meet the deadline for the competition. So I'll be finishing it with a quality wax later on. It's starting to come together, so next I'll join the neck and the body, and that's done with four screws. Off camera I made some stainless steel cups for the screw heads to sit into. After applying the fret oil, I finished the body using some renaissance wax and then buffed it up with a soft rag. Now I just need to add all the hardware and wire it up. I had no idea what any of these parts were and it was a bit overwhelming at first, but it's actually fairly straightforward once you learn what's what. I was always a little concerned about the soldering because I'm not actually very good at it, but it went very well and I actually think I did a pretty good job of it too, so I don't know what I was worried about. It's nearly done, just the strings to go, and for that I got some help from my mate John who has a lot more idea than I do. John also tuned it for me and then he gave it a go just to see if it works and see how it sounds. Thanks to the great guitar builder for inviting me to enter, I really enjoyed the challenge. Don't forget to check out all the other makers builds and make sure to get a ticket to the guitar giveaway. Links in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.